Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how to build a uh, pyrography power supply for these pens that I've made. Uh, if you see my other video, you'll see how to make one of these pens. If you do, uh, be sure to use a, a high temperature epoxy. That's what I use. It works very well. The normal epoxy, if you use them for a long time, gets hot and can soften a little bit. So you want to use a high temperature epoxy. But let's get started with the power supply. You only need three things. First thing you're going to need is an old microwave oven. That's the key. The second thing is just some wire. This is some 12 gauge stranded electrical wire. You could use solid, but uh, it would be a little harder to work with. This should work fine. The third thing is a dimmer switch. This one is a knob. It's got a, a click off on so it should be real nice for the uh, for the power supply and that's really all you need uh, first thing you do is take your you might want to wear gloves to take your microwave apart just because they're always nasty dirty inside and a lot of sharp edges so take the cover off and what you need out of the microwave you're going to need from the microwave is the power cord and the transformer. Okay, uh, you want to make sure that it's unplugged before you do this. But we're going to remove the transformer and the power cord, and we'll go from there. The other thing I wanted to mention is this: uh, this is the magnetron. That's the device that generates the uh, microwaves. There's a couple of cool magnets in here. Since you're taking this apart, you might want to think about taking that apart and save those magnets. Okay, we remove the, uh, the power cord and the transformer. The next thing we need to do is remove this high voltage winding. We want to save this, this heavier winding on the bottom. That's the power, but this, this top one with the thin wire, the high voltage winding, we need to remove that, but we need to be careful not to damage anything else. So we'll get set up to do that now. Okay, what I've done now is I, I have my, my coil and I'm uh, putting it on my uh, vise. I'm not holding it, I just want to support it. You could put it on a couple of blocks of wood or something. And I have a piece of uh, wood here that I've cut about the same size as that top coil. And what we want to do, oh, that's not going to work. I need a better piece of wood. Let's try this. I'm just driving that coil out to the other side. Okay, once you've got that winding removed, careful not to damage your, your windings here, hopefully not. You might find a couple of pieces of metal like this. This is a laminated piece. They need to go back in on top of this uh, lower coil. So you want to carefully put those back where they came from. of the other winding. 
and they have come out of place a little bit. They should be right in there. Okay. Now as long as you haven't damaged this lower coil, you should be in good shape. The next thing we're going to do is add some low voltage windings. Okay, like I said, this is 12 gauge stranded wire. So we're going to start here. I want to leave a few inches out here. So I'm going to clamp it just so it stays put like that. Okay. Then I'm just going to run it through. And we want to end up with a transformer that puts out about 3 volts. Now, like I said, you could do this with solid wire, but it would be just a little bit harder. I'm going to change this around to the other side. That's okay. I'm trying to tuck these in a little bit here. Okay, what I've done now is just I've connected my transformer. I used a couple of wires from the microwave to clip onto this lower coil. And uh, we're just going to plug this in and see what kind of voltage I have. Take my little voltmeter here. And this is AC volts. Just hook up here. Three point one volts. Okay, so now I have three windings is all I need, and I'm down to three point one volts. Plug this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here. So it came out to one volt per winding. Okay. Thank you. 
So, all right, we have zero volts now, and we can turn this up slowly until we get up to three volts. So we have our control here. Let's see how it would work with a pyrography pen. Okay, now to see how this would work, I've just added a piece of my nichrome wire that I use for my pens to the two leads. And here we have the, the dimmer switch. We just slowly turn it up and we get a nice red hot wire. I have good control. So then this would be the wood burning. I don't know if you can see that. This is <laughs> very, very hot here. So all you need is three windings on your transformer to get up to your three volts and that gives me good control, plenty of voltage for any pen I want to use. Then you just need to put it in an enclosure and uh, you're all set to go. Right, I found a nice enclosure for it. I got the dial all set. Uh, it's all wired up. Tuck everything in. And uh, I've included a plug for the, for the pen. And let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. We'll plug this in here. Got a couple more little things to do on it. But... Now, let's see. And there we have it. It's a little hot there. A nice dial. There's actually an on off switch here. And I included plugs for two different kinds of pens. And there we have it a pyrography power supply that you can build. This didn't even cost me ten dollars. Uh, the only thing I had to buy was the uh, dimmer switch. So, good luck.